Hello, I'm Kippy from KippyAtHome.com. Welcome to my home and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be crafting up some really cute, inexpensive clay pots. Some of these clay pots I got at the Dollar Tree and two clay pots for a dollar. That's amazing. My daughter is here helping me and we are going to be kind of tag team so you'll get like double the fun and she has made this cute little frog prints and I will put this download for that below and you could just print that out right on your own printer and make a pretty little prints and all the other supplies i'll also have those listed in my description and before we get started make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss anything in the future all right friends let's get started all right so for this first project i'm going to be doing a distress pot with a image transfer using acrylic medium so to begin with i painted a pot gray and then i'm going over it with white paint using a pretty dry brush um, and working in smaller sections around which creates more interesting um, texture than you can get from just painting something solid white and then sanding it um, So after I get my main base done, I went back with my brush and I just dabbed some white to give it its brightest areas in a few places. After allowing it to dry, I went back with a gray paint that I diluted with water and using this um, stencil brush, I put it applied it to the pot and then wiped away the excess with a paper towel to give it more of a kind of water stained look. In a few spots where I thought it was a little too dark, I grabbed my 320 sandpaper and I just sanded away the very top of it. Okay, so for my image transfer, I made this little frog guy that I printed out on an inkjet printer. He's going to be available to download so you can use them too. So I'm going to be using a matte acrylic medium. Right now I'm just lining him up where I want him to go. So I'm going to be using this acrylic matte medium and I'm going to be painting the surface of the pot where I want the frog to be as well as onto the frog itself. Any sort of pigment, this would be the time. I'm just putting a little bit of silver on the crown to add a little extra. When you're ready, you're going to be taking your design and placing it face down over where you applied the acrylic medium. Um, you're gonna be using your brayer, finger, whatever, to smooth the design down onto the surface. After allowing it to dry for one hour, I'm going to now be using water and I'm going to be applying it to the design to saturate the paper. Then I'm going to be using my finger to rub off the excess paper, leaving behind just the ink transfer. And look at that, our little frog prints turned out pretty cute. That little frog prince Olivia did is perfect for my little collection. All right, so Olivia got on that Cricut machine and she's so good at and printed out or cut out a kippy at home and she's gonna mix a couple colors together and she'll be kind of on screen while I'm working on my next pot. 
mixing the colors because we're wanting to add a little bit of yellow to that color. So she's going to get them painted and she's going to use a pot that we've already used before and paint it white. It was black and inside of it green. All right. So to my next project is this little pot. I'm going to paint it white and I'm going to add a little Mod Podge. So let's get started. So I'm combining the Annie Sloan duck egg blue with some of the English yellow to create kind of a sea foam green color. I'm also applying a little water to thin out my blue paint. Um, that's one of the great things about chalk paint is you, if they're a little too thin, you can leave them out and they'll thicken up. Or if they're too thick, you can add a little bit of water to thin them out. So I'm just gonna mix these two colors together until they are thoroughly mixed. Hey, this is kind of fun. Olivia and I work in tandem, you know. She's getting a little more green there from the blue and the yellow together and they're nice Annie Sloan chalk paint. Chalk paint is just a perfect paint for these pots. They're porous and they just seem to absorb them um, easily and dry. So I'm gonna paint my little paint on here and I'm gonna use my heat gun, dry it up, put a second coat on it, and then we are gonna be set for our decoupage. All right, I'm getting out my Mod Podge and I'll put a little bit um, on a upcycled plastic lid. And um, here's something just to be sure about is if you're using a repeat on the on the um, pot, it's a little bit of a difficult thing and you want to tear the layers off and find that straight edge if you're going to try to match it up. It's virtually impossible going around the circle with a plaid, but I gave it a go anyway. So I had to make some relief cuts. It was pretty easy. So I'm just going to kind of start in the middle and try to keep the top of it neat so I can work that straight edge and then I'll, I'll remove it at the bottom and, and have to work the, fill, the fullness in. after I got my placement where I wanted it I went back and did like a little extra coat there to hold it on and then I had to use a little bit of um, plastic saran wrap to kind of help me push it down a little bit more as it dries you get a little tiny bit of bubbling so you kind of want to work with it but this is virtually impossible like I said not to have some wrinkles in it because of the, sh the shape of it and I got a couple little tears and whatever and I just went back and patched them and I'm really happy with the results I have some extra um, napkin down below there and I have allowed the decoupage to completely dry and now I'm using a little bit of water just kind of getting it wet there and the napkin easily tears away without pulling it off the front of the pot so I get it 
um, all kind of the same so it's nice and neat on the bottom. So I'm on to my next project and that is going to be this pot. It's going to be painted white. Olivia's going to be over here painting her pot that was black. She's going to paint it white. She got all the insides painted green. So I'm jumping on over while she's working on hers. I'm going to work on mine. I'm going to put my first coat as black paint and then I'm going to paint a layer. I'm going to wait for it to dry and then I'll paint a layer of white over it. paint is dry and I actually did two coats and then I'm going to shabby chic it up a little bit and show a few little corners and get it so it looks old and layered and rustic. using that heat gun again and it doesn't take but a jiffy to get these done so now I want to expose a little bit of that black paint under there just to you know show some age because you know these pots are brand new so we don't want them to look brand new so I'm going to put my little herb herbs on there and I'm just going to get it where I want it and then I'll be ready to start my little ink process All right, gonna get that all sanded up. And now I'm ready with my little rubber band. Oh, it was Olivia's fantastic idea was to use the rubber band to keep things straight, using it as a guide to put my letters on there. So I'm gonna use my ink, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna about one and a quarter inches up on this little pot. And this pot was from the Dollar Tree and I got two pots for a dollar. And it was, a, I mean, hey, that's a great deal. So just make sure your letters are going the correct way and this is the best way to do it is to actually put them down the way you're going to spell it because I'm telling you this from experience because I've made the mistake and had the letter upside down. So you just put it on there and don't worry about it. Have fun with it. If it's not perfect, that's okay. It's supposed to be kind of rustic anyway. Pure perfection so well in my book anyway so I'm taking my little pad here if you don't have one of these you definitely want one and you can keep those things as clean as a whistle and they'll just be like brand new again so make sure you have one of these clean them up ink pads after having painted the inside and the outside of this pot I'm gonna be applying some vinyl for finishing touch so I'm just using some black vinyl and transfer tape and I'm going to just apply the vinyl decal onto the pot. So I'm just going to line it up and then burnish it with my little scraper and then pull off the transfer tape and I'm done. All right, here we go. We're starting on our next project. This is going to be our, t our transfer and it it turns out beautiful. It's very simple. Um, it's almost what I'd call no fail. You still, as an adult, want to do it. It's probably not no fail enough for children unless they're a little bit older. So you're going to put your paint on and dry it like we've done the whole process. But this time I'm going to add a darkening so we can age it. So this one has actually been sitting outside for three years and it's aged. Well, I've used the darkening. I did all these other things, but it actually looks even prettier after it's been sitting outside, as you can see. 
So I'm going to make a little bit of a wash and I'm going to use a gel and you can use just the paint and you add a little bit of water, wipe it away. You can let it drip around, do whatever, you, however you like, like to look, you know, get it to where you like it. And you just want to age it up. It's like it's been sitting out, you know, in your garden in South of France. So you can use dark wax, whatever, you know, process you like. I'd like the dark to be a little darker around that just under that rim and here I've shown you where I've used the a little bit of sandpaper and you can do that too and take some of the paint, sandpaper um, take some of the paint away completely and show some of that terracotta underneath that definitely looks aged or like I did on this one I'm not going to do that I'm just going to leave it the way it is and when I stick it outside it'll do it itself naturally. So these transfers are pretty easy to apply. I'm going to be cutting out the one that I'm using. So I'm going to be using this little angel here. And so I'm just going to place it where I want it to go on the pot. And these are actually a little sticky so you can sort of hold them down. Um, otherwise you can also use tape. Then I'm just taking the enclosed little stick here and rubbing all over the design. You can kind of see where the transfer is stuck because it'll be a lighter gray. Also, the film will just sort of lift up away from it when it's firmly attached to the pot. So I decided I did not like the word that was on there. So I scraped it off using my fingernail and now I am burnishing on my new little words here with the same technique. Ooh, that was a bunch of fun. I hope you guys will meet us again. We're going to be doing all kinds of crafting for our flower garden and other items that are going to be fun for this spring and summer. Y'all have a wonderful day and don't forget to ring the bell and subscribe and check out all the supplies in, the, in my links below. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon.